So Firo, for a good part of his history, has actually been, you know, uh, our mining algorithms have been focused on being mineable by graphic cards. And obviously some people are saying, well, okay, why don't you embrace ASICs or why don't you embrace uh, CPU mining? And uh, I guess the, the answer is actually was also from our experience as well. And the idea is that first of all, we want Firo to be mineable by what we call consumer commodity hardware. You can mine it using regularly available hardware. Now, you know, ASICs for many people uh, are not easy to get, right? So maybe Bitcoin mining machines are a bit of an exception, but if you try to get ASICs for other types of coins, uh, they are generally in very, very short supply and it is not easy for the, the regular Joe to buy. And the problem also with this ASICs is that beyond mining, there is no real use for it other than mining. For example, if I have a graphics card, you know, I can game, I can render, I do have resale value. While with ASICs, there's only one thing that it can do. Once it's obsolete, it tends to be just a very fancy doorstop. Now, if you want to embrace the distribution powers of proof of work, we need to make sure that anyone can mine with commodity hardware. And GPUs have a kind of a nice balance of, you know, uh, making sure that people have stake in the game and at the same time still being accessible. For example, uh, you know, people ask, that, well, why don't, if, you, if your goal is to be accessible to everyone, isn't CPU binding a better choice because everyone has a CPU, not everyone has a powerful graphics card. And I think that's a good question. Now, in our experience, actually, when Firo or as it then was Zcoin, when it first started, it was actually aimed to be CPU mineable. But what we found is that because many, they are the existence of large botnets and botnets are basically, um, groups of thousands and thousands of computers that are infected with some sort of malware and that the botnet operator can choose what they do for the botnet operator. So let's, there's, you know, for example, Monero, which uses RandomX, a CPU uh, mineable algorithm, is, you know, uh, still mineable by a lot of botnets. And what that means is that that one person has a lot of power and not actually spending the cost to mine uh, Monero because if I'm infected like in you know, thousands of computers, I'm not spending the electricity, I'm not spending the hardware and that's an unfair advantage as well. Another thing that we also noticed uh, also early on is that uh, with the existing existence of like you know this cloud computing solutions like AWS or being able to, to spin up like you know voucher instances and stuff like that, Right now, the incentives are kind of perverted because there are a lot of availability of cheap credits that are below market price. Like for example, you know, if you sign up, you're going to get like, you know, $10,000, $20,000 worth of, uh, you know, AWS credits and stuff like that. And these credits can be used to also mine cryptocurrency if you, you don't get detected uh, at very, very cheap costs. So at the end of the day, we find that CPU mining, while you know, fair in theory, there are many, many people that do have access to large amounts of CPU power that they're not necessarily paying for, uh, that are just lying either, and that leads to a different kind of centralization as well. While that hasn't really been the case for graphics cards where you know there hasn't really been like large scale GPU botnets, people who own GPUs generally you know use them. Uh, they're, they're not just like sitting there uh, you know either uh, in some kind of server farm. So we believe that I guess GPU mining is a nice balance uh, between the two. And one thing that we're also thinking about is that Ethereum, the, the coin that is you know the largest, uh, that right now is being secured by the most number of GPUs is uh, going to be shifting to proof of stake. And all these um, you know, miners will be looking for coins to mine. And we see this as, as also a good opportunity to take that influx of and get new users into the cryptocurrency. 
So I hope that explains why we have been very, I guess, you know, pro GPU. And also we are very against, uh, you know, ASICs and stuff like that, which have been, I guess, only available to a very select few people.